In another test of the new short track package, the NASCAR Cup Series drivers revved their engines and headed to Martinsville Speedway on Sunday. However, after the race had left many disappointed, all eyes were on the track to see if the drivers would finally be impressed. But why didn't the new package live up to its promises? And why are NASCAR drivers upset about the new aero package? Join us to find out what's going on right now between the drivers. But before that, please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button for more whereabouts on NASCAR. The NASCAR Cup Series race that took place at Martinsville Speedway on April 16th gave drivers yet another opportunity to evaluate the new short track package, which features 30% less downforce. Following the NOCO 400, several individuals made it abundantly obvious that they were unimpressed with the outcome. There were hardly any changes in position at the top of the field throughout the race that took place at Martinsville Speedway, although there were a few drivers who were able to make their way through the field throughout the first two stages of the race, such as Ryan Blaney and Alex Bowman. The first person to take the lead was Ross Chastain, who stayed on the track during caution while pole sitter Ryan Priest went down pit road to get new tires. The second incident occurred when Kevin Harvick used new tires in an attempt to get up to Ross Chastain. The race had a total of 10 lead changes, however under green flag circumstances there were only 4 of those changes. Denny Hamlin commented after the Cup Series race that the package was terrible, it's either the package or the tires, and the transcript of his comments was provided by Tokyo Racing. You can't pass. After 10 circuits, we were called for caution, and I was unable to get by cars that I had been passing to take second place. It is really a challenging task. Winning in next-gen racing is not just about luck, it's all about strategy and how well you execute on pit road, because you can't control the race when you need to, at least we couldn't. The vehicle that dominates the race or is considered to be the best car does not win very often. In the very end, we made an excellent strategic decision that allowed us to regain our positions. Penalties cause problems for contenders. At Martinsville Speedway, two drivers, Priest and Bubba Wallace, stood out as conspicuous examples of the passing problems that occurred there. During the first two stages, they were both in the top 10, but they had to go back to the end of the lead lap because of speeding penalties during a caution. Priest's vehicle was easily one of the most powerful in the competition. He got the pole position, and he led every one of the first 135 laps of the race, which helped him win stage 1. After he was knocked to the back of the pack, he was unable to make any further progress. Before ultimately crossing the finish line in 15th place overall, Priest spent the remainder of the race somewhere around the 20th position. After receiving his own speeding ticket, Wallace had a much easier time getting his life back on track. Even yet, the only reason he was able to do so was that the number 23 team took a risk and remained on the circuit for a longer period of time as the bulk of the cars headed down pit road, under green flag conditions. The loss of a wheel by the number 78 Chevrolet Camaro driven by Anthony Alfredo prompted the caution flag, which allowed Wallace to pit for new tires without falling down in the standings. After that, he ended up coming in 9th place overall. Eric Almirola, who finished in 6th place, remarked after the race that it was crazy that Martinsville was a race for track position. There isn't much of a gap between the cars, and the competition is fierce. During the initial portion of the race, I believe that our car was among the finest available. But as the race progressed and the course changed, our car also needed to adapt. As a result, we fell a little bit behind the other competitors. After that, we were finally able to get the car in its best condition. Drew, Blickensturfer, made some wonderful adjustments, and I believe that we were in all likelihood the best car. We went through the green flag pit routine, and then there was a caution for a wheel, which gave a lot of those guys a free present by keeping them out of the pits. We had already passed a lot of those guys in the race, and it's so hard to pass that you give those guys track position and start behind them on the same tires. It's not easy to get through. There were stark differences between the two short tracks. Since NASCAR adopted the new package with reduced downforce for short tracks, there have been two actual short track races held. The first one took place at Richmond Raceway and was praised for how competitive it was generally. The second race, which was held at Martinsville Speedway, was an entirely different story. Quite a few race car drivers voiced strong complaints about how tough it was to pass other vehicles, and how the newly introduced short track package did not completely repair the racing product. It has just opened the door for drivers like Joey Logano, Ross Chastain, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to make their way to the head of the pack by sticking out on the circuit longer than the other competitors. No. When asked about the limited options for passing, Logano responded, I'm pretty sure everyone kind of saw it. It is quite difficult to maintain stillness. It's kind of odd how on certain tracks, it has unquestionably improved it, while on other tracks it hasn't made much of a difference. The race at Richmond was by far the superior one. Here at Martinsville, I'd say we probably need to go back to the drawing board and try to find something else to aid racing a little bit more. But a part of it, too, you've got to understand that all of the cars run at the same speed. They gave us a box with cars that are all the same, so it looks like the majority of the time, we'll be moving at the same pace as one another. 
You won't be able to pass the other vehicles if they're within a tenth of each other. There needs to be a greater difference in speed from player to player throughout the field. Now let's move on to race analysis and how Larson got his victory this Sunday. Larson took the lead with 29 laps remaining, after a tussle with leader Joey Logano, who never looked back, racing away to win by 4.142 seconds. Larson's victory is his second of the season, his 21st of his career, and his first at Martinsville, which came as a huge surprise to the 2021 series champion, who previously stated that the circuit does not fit his driving style. Logano held off Martin Truex Jr. at the finish line to finish second, Denny Hamlin was fourth, and Chase Briscoe rounded out the top five. Eric Almirola, Ryan Blaney, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Bubba Wallace, and Chase Elliott completed the top ten. Elliott was making his first start after missing six races due to a broken tibia in his left leg. Pole sitter Ryan Priest dominated Stage 1, dominating all 80 laps on his way to a first-place finish ahead of Almirola. He had early control of the race, leading Daniel Suarez by 1.5 seconds after 25 circuits. With 21 laps remaining, Priest passed relying on series champion Joey Logano, who had started from the back of the field due to unauthorized changes to his car before the race. Kevin Harvick's four-tire pit call ultimately paid off in Stage 2 as he raced down Ross Chastain for the lead and claimed his first stage victory since the 2020 season. On the lap 92 restarts, Priest led Suarez into the stage before a caution 40 laps later after Harrison Burton went around at Turn 2 after contact from Eric Jones and came to a stop on the circuit. All of the lead lap cars pitted, with Priest again coming off pit road first, but he, Truex, and Wallace were all punished for speeding on pit road and had to restart at the rear of the field. On lap 143, Chastain, who stayed out, took the lead followed by Suarez and Almirola, with Priest in 30th place. With 20 laps remaining, Chastain maintained the lead on old tires, while Todd Gilliand finished second and Harvick finished third. Harvick passed both Gilliand and Chastain on lap 167 to seize the lead for the first time in the race. Following the intermission between stages 2 and 3, all of the lead lap cars pitted, with Briscoe edging Harvick off pit road until being passed by Hamlin on lap 247. After several laps of side-by-side -side racing, Hamlin ultimately got around Briscoe and passed him for the lead 10 laps later. Blaney and Alex Bowman were the first to enter pit road on lap 298, kicking off a final round of green flag pit stops to replace tires and fuel in order to finish the race. On lap 303, a tire came off Anthony Alfredo's number 78 Chevrolet and came to a stop on turn 4, bringing out the race's fourth caution. The majority of the lead lap vehicles pit, with Harvick being the first off pit road. Briscoe stayed on the track and took over the lead. On lap 313 of the race, he took the lead, followed by Larson, Tyler, Reddick, and Harvick. On lap 343, J.J. Yelly collided with the wall at turn 3, causing the fifth of the caution race. Most of the lead lap vehicles pitted, but few remained on the track, including Logano, who inherited the lead. Logano was followed by Almirola, Hamlin, Stenhouse, and Larson, who took only two tires on the restart on lap 355. Larson ultimately drove to the inside of Logano with 29 laps to go, and was able to clear him off turn 2 to seize the lead for the first time in the race. So that's all we've got for today, we hope you enjoyed it. Tell us what you think of the video in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in the upcoming video.